with us today. Uh, they are obedient friends of God, and I have so been enriched, blessed by their ministry and their love and their wisdom. Their wisdom is recorded in a plethora of books, uh, over 30 between the two of them. You can go on jimandpatbanks.com and you have access to all of them. They are very important to get in your library, especially with the days that we're in and the things that we're facing and with how time is accelerating in the kingdom. But you are going to be so blessed today by the ministry of Jim and Pat. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. I've been waiting so long for you to come. <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> With the devil. Oh, well, <laughs> dumb devil. <laughs> it didn't work, right? All right. So there's so many things we can talk about. Let's start with just, you know, to touch on momentarily trauma, because that is really something that God had you do a deep dive on, mm -hmm. and you brought cutting-edge revelation to the church. So let's talk about that first. Well, trauma is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. So everything that can happen negatively in a family happens to all the kids, but they all respond to it differently. Yep. <clears throat> There's a book you need to get a hold of called um, Life Model, Living with the Heart that Jesus Gave You by mm -hmm. Wilder and Friesen and a cast of other characters. But at any rate, within it, there's a definition of type A trauma and type B trauma. Type A trauma is what you don't get from your parents. Mm. Type B is what your parents do to you. And of course, this is childhood yeah. trauma that I'm specifically referring to. But Dr. Wilder's uh, um, ministry for the last 40 years has been in this field. And he said for for his, from his experience, type A trauma, the things you don't get from your parents, is harder to get over than type B, what your parents do to you. Very interesting. Because it's lifestyle. Yeah. The message that you get is you're nobody, you're rejected, you have no value, you have no purpose, while events can be dealt with individually and may carry the same message but not lifestyle. And so many of the people that we deal with, typically from childhood, that's the issue, is what they didn't get. Right. And some of the stories are just killers. I so, might say that trauma also, people say, well, I haven't had trauma. If you were born into this world, you yeah, had trauma. Right. It's a fallen world. It's a fallen world. And we think just because we've grown up or we're adults now, the things that happen in childhood don't affect us. And then many in the church believe they don't affect us because now I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. And therefore, I don't have to. And that's the difficulty right. is we are new creations, but we're also in the process of becoming that new creation. And it's the issues that have happened to us very young that set the foundation of our life for our belief systems about us and the world and, and our Father God that keep us from being able to mature into that as readily as what we would want to. And that's how we would address trauma. So we have a number of people that will come and the, the wife will drag the husband or <laughs> and say, and his own holy trauma, and you're going, okay. And so you begin to go through the childhood, and they're like, I oh, do yeah. Have trauma. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because it was normal. Right. Right. Was Dysfunction normal. was normal. Right. The abnormal well, was normal. Right. Yeah. But the other other side of that is the fact that that you think as a child that everybody as a child is experiencing the same thing. And so you can even live in a wonderful household and go next door and realize We don't do that here. Something's this wrong. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> or, I, I or went the through other that. Way around. You went yeah. through that. Of course. Yeah. We all did. Yeah. yeah. 
where yeah. we compared ourselves to another household. I wish my mom was like that. I wish my dad was like that. I wish we prayed together. I wish we went on family vacation. I wish yeah. we had dinner. I wish sure. my mom said, I love you more or whatever the case right. may be. Right. Right. And right. that creates trauma. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. So how do we heal from it? How do we get over it? How do we invite uh, Jesus to meet us in it and get free? Well, after you figure out the drugs don't work, <laughs> you need to come to people like us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, thank you, Jim. That was great. <laughs> um, you know, here's the thing. There are so many things that seem to be left out of the Bible. Yes. All of those things. And people, I'm afraid, in the and now, we love the local church. I know you do. Okay. But we also know that we've obviously failed in many areas, one of which is recognizing that people need help. Yes. They don't just need more knowledge. Right. They need help. And in doing that, it's it's searching out. It's that scripture that says, but it's a king's to search out yes. the jewels, the, yes. the gold. And I think that what has been happening over the years is people are saying there's more to trauma. So it, Jim's trauma prayer releases many people yes. from their, because it's stored in their bodies, it's stored in their soul, and it has this gripping effect even though they aren't thinking about it. Right. And it releases and brings health and brings peace. But then there's that aspect of walking it out how do I untangle myself and my belief systems and my responses to trauma? And then there's a lot of things on getting our hearts healed from it, yes. But then how do I enter into the process? See, the one thing we've said throughout our whole ministry is we don't want people dependent on us. Right. You know, we, we want to, to do what God's given us to do and equip you to do the rest with the help of the body of Christ. Let me just share one thing because it just came. Mm -hmm. I received a message on, uh, I don't know, Messenger or something the other day from a gal at a rehab place. And this was a sincere comment that she wrote. She said, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be great if there was a place where people could go and they could get they could find out about Jesus, but then they could get healed from their trauma and, and people could help them grow in who they were. And, you know, they could kind of learn about the Bible. And she started going through this whole thing. And she said, D could you guys, you know, do you think maybe we could start a place like that? <laughs> and my thought was, that's what the local church is, is supposed to be. Yes. And yet here's people going, where can we go? And so that that's what drives our passion. But learning how to deal with those issues and how to get with Jesus and how to realize he's there. Yeah. And so that when something happens, I can quiet down and I can get with him and say, Jesus, what do you want me to say? What do you want to say to me about this? Yeah. Will you bring healing into that? And some of it requires us to do the work.